Hello fifth graders and welcome to a quick bit of quiz help today on our math unit 1 lesson 7 quiz about exploring numerical expressions part C. Now making this recording today kind of like how I provided some help on the last one main reason being that I know at this point of the year we've not had a chance to do many math classes yet and so I do want to make sure that you guys get some support on this quiz from me in some way. So I figure a quick recording where we can take a look at some sample questions from the quiz will be very helpful. And bear in mind, the questions we'll see are going to be lifted either straight from the quiz or at least going to be very, very similar to the ones you'll see on the quiz. And I think we have about five that we can look at today. So with that, let's go and get into it. First off, I want to remind everyone that the key thing to use here to help you with this quiz is going to be what we call the keywords chart. It's this chart right here that tells you what words to look for in a written expression to determine what type of math is proper to use. So for example, if you see the words more or add or sum or in all, those are signs that you may have to add. If you see words like how many less or how many fewer or take away or how many are left or the word difference, that might tell you you got to subtract. If you see words like times, uh, twice as many, uh, product, those are words that might tell you you got to multiply or times. And if you see a word like quotient or splitting or sharing equally or uh, cutting something in half. Those would be words that imply that we have to use division. So remember what keywords equal what types of math to do and you'll be able to convert between written expressions to math problems and math problems about back to written expressions. Go back and forth between the two. So knowing that let's go ahead and get in our first example which is going to be a set of written statements featuring the numbers 28 and 7, and noting what keyword is used in each statement to determine what type of math is being done with those two numbers. So the first one is pretty straightforward. It says 28 times 7. So if we want to write that in numerical form, <clears throat> or put it in the form of just with numbers and operation signs, well, that's simple. We have 28, we have 7. It says times, therefore put it multiplication or time sign. Sorry, that looks a little sloppy. Let's make that a little nicer. There we go. Next, we have 28 divided by 7. Also very simple. That implies we're just dividing, so let's put a division sign there. Next one says 7 fewer than 28. So this one may be a little less obvious, but if you take a look at that word fewer and take a look at the uh, keywords chart, you can see the word fewer is actually right there. And what section of the keywords chart is it in? It is in the subtraction sector, section. So finding out what number is fewer than another number implies that you are subtracting, you are taking away. So we can stick a subtraction sign in there. So, so 7 fewer than 28 can be read as 28 minus 7. Next up we have the word sum. This is another good one to know. The sum of 28 and 7 so whether we're going to put a plus sign, minus sign, time sign, or divide sign right there depends on where can we find the word sum in the keywords chart. Well, if you look carefully, I can see the word sum uh, right there. There it is. And it is in the adding section. So the word sum actually is the word we use for the answer to an addition problem. Therefore, we can put a plus right there. Next up, we got quotient. of tw What is the quotient of 28 and 7? Moving a little faster. I'll remind you guys that the word quotient is the word that is used for the answer to a division problem, which that can be proven by taking a look right there. There's the word quotient, and it is in the division section. Therefore, the quotient of 28 and 7 can be writ written as 28 divided by 7. 7 more than 28 next. That should be fairly straightforward. If you know that if we are starting with a number and want to know how much more it is, well, more is a word that tells us that we need to add. So we are starting with 28, adding 7 more. Therefore, 28 plus 7. 28 less 7. The opposite of more is less, there, and the opposite of adding is subtracting. Therefore, if you look right there, there's the word less. So 28 less 7 means 28 minus 7. And lastly, the product of 28 and 7. In case you didn't know, the word product is actually the word that's used for the answer to a multiplication problem, which can be found right there in the keywords chart in the multiplication section. Therefore, the product of 28 and 7 can be read as 28 times 7. So there we go. There is all those responses there. So taking 
those written words and translating them into numerical statements just like that. So if that's all clear, let's take a look at another example. This time, it's, this question will be similar to the previous one in that we're given a written statement written with words, but we want to translate it or convert it into a numerical statement that only uses numbers and operation signs. So the statement we're given today is, what is seven more than the product of nine and eight? Seven more than the product of nine and eight. So for this one, let's start by saying that the seven more part can be applied to this part of the statement. We need a number and we need an operation sign there. While the part that says the product of eight and nine can be reserved for these spots here. Here we need the two numbers and an operation sign. So let's start by putting the numbers in because that's the easier part. We have the number seven, we have the number nine, and we have the number eight. Seven more, so let's get a seven there, than the product of nine and eight. So that means the nine and the eight can go in these boxes. Let's get those in first. So from there, the only thing we really need to now identify is what operation signs will we need to put in these boxes based upon the keywords used here. So from here, it's really just like we did in the previous problem. Seven more. Okay, well, seven more. Once again, you may remember the word more is in the addition section of the keywords chart, meaning seven more we, means we need to add. We are adding seven to something. So seven plus, and then product of eight and nine. Once again, product is the answer to a multiplication problem. It is in the times section of the keywords chart. Therefore, the product of nine and eight can be read as nine times eight. And so there we have it, folks. We have now written our expression in numerical form. Seven more than the product of nine and eight can be read as seven plus nine times eight. So hopefully that's all clear because the next example is gonna be very similar. In fact, this one we could probably do a little quicker. So this time, we're given the written statement, the quotient of 12 and 6 take away 8. The quotient of 12 and 6 take away 8. Once again, we'll start simple. We'll take those numbers that we see there, 12, 6, and 8, and we'll just plug them into the number boxes here because we need 1, 2, 3 numbers and then operation signs in between. So let's take those three numbers, 12, 6 and 8 and stick them in just like that. So that leaves the next step to be to look at those keywords in the problem, quotient and takeaway, and determine what operation sign must go into those boxes based upon those keywords. Starting with quotient, one more time, you may remember from the first problem that the word quotient is in the division section, meaning the word quotient is actually the word we give to the answer to a division problem. So the quotient of 12 and 6 can be read as 12 divided by 6, with then takeaway, of course, being right here in the keywords chart. We can see it right there. Takeaway being a giveaway that we are subtracting. So we can then just go ahead and put a minus sign there. And there we have it. The quotient of 12 and 6 take away 8. That being the statement in written form can translate to the math expression 12 divided by 6 minus 8. Very good, carry it on. This time, we're now going to do things the other way around, okay guys? The previous problems were all about starting with a written phrase, written with words, and then translating it or converting it into a math problem with numbers and operation signs, but this time we're doing it the opposite way. This time we are starting with a numerical expression written with just numbers and operation signs, and then being asked to convert it to a written phrase using words. And so here's what we gotta do first. You'll notice that I've already provided the numbers for us. We got 14 plus, and then in parentheses, nine minus two. The 14 we already have right here. And then the nine and the two, 
we already have right here. So the only thing really to do in this example is now figure out which word should be used for each operation sign. So we have a plus sign there, and we have a minus sign there, the subtraction sign. So the keywords here are going to be used are this. We have the blank of 14 and the blank of 9 and 2. So in order to make sure we get the right words here, though, here we're going to need to make sure that we use the proper words that are used for the answer for an addition problem and a subtraction problem specifically. So we want to make sure we use a noun for these. I'm going to keep this simple, folks, and let you know that the proper words to use here are going to be sum and difference. Sum and difference. That's because the sum is the word we give to an answer to an addition problem, while the difference is the answer we give to the answer of a subtraction problem. So if we plug in the words sum and difference there, which I'll just go ahead and flip to the next screen and show you what that looks like, you're going to see that this sentence now makes sense. The sum of 14 and the difference of 9 and 2. The sum of 14 and the difference of 9 and 2. Really no other word works there because if you say like, for example, if you tried to just grab any word from the addition uh, section of the words chart and try to stick it in there, like the word more, it's not really going to make sense. It won't read as the more of 14. That doesn't quite work. Uh, the together of 14, that doesn't quite work either. Similarly for difference, if we try to use another one of the words like uh, the, the fewer of 9 and 2, that doesn't quite work, or the takeaway of 9 and 2, nah. The only word that really works there is difference. So there we go. The sum of 14 and the difference of 9 and 2. All right, two more really quickly. This time, out of similar example to the one before, we have a numerical expression written only with numbers and operation signs, which could be read as 5, well, okay. I feel like if I read it out, it might give the answer away. So what I'll do is I'll let you take a look at that expression there and see if you can read it yourself. Read it and listen to yourself very carefully. How do you read it? We do have a 5 there. We have a multiplication sign here. And then in parentheses, we have 30 minus 10. So 5, multiplication sign, and then we treat this as one big section of the expression, the 30 minus 10. So think carefully about what it is we're doing here, and then we'll see if we can decide which of these four written expressions is the proper way to translate that numerical expression. So the answers are, is it A, 5, uh, five times the difference of 30 minus 10? Is it 5 times the difference of 10 minus 30? Is it the difference of 30 and the product of 5 times 10? I'm highlighting here to see if we can match the highlighting in the problem to the, to the answers down here. Or is it the difference of the product of 5 times Ten and thirty. Okay. So if you look carefully at the numerical expression up here and the possible answer choices down here, which one appears to, at least by looking at the colors that I highlighted, which one appears to most close, closely match up? Well, in the problem I have up here, I have the five highlighted yellow, the multiplication sign highlighted green, and the thirty-eight minus ten in parentheses highlighted blue. If you look at C and D, you'll notice that the, the colors in the problem up here do not really match the colors down here, right? Here in these ones we have the difference implying the subtraction as appearing first with the multiplication appearing 
next. However, that's not really quite how it appears up here, right? We have the five times appearing first. Therefore, I think it should be plain to see that C and D are not the correct answers. So it's really got to be between A and B. As for which one is correct, the only real difference between these two is that they both start with five times the difference of, five times the difference of, the only difference is that answer A says 30 minus 10, while answer B says 10 minus 30. So if you look carefully at the actual numerical problem, which is it? Well, it's 30 minus 10, right? Which makes more sense. Remember, when you're subtracting, you have to start with a bigger number and then subtract a smaller number. You can't start with a smaller number like 10 and then subtract 30 like it says in answer B, at least not without going into negative numbers, but that's going to be more like a sixth grade concept. So the difference of 10 minus 30 is not correct. We're not solving for that. Rather, the answer must then be A because, as stated, it starts with 5. It has us multiplying, so 5 times. 5 times. And what exactly are we multiplying 5 times? We are multiplying that by whatever the difference of 30 minus 10 is. Therefore, the answer is A. Five times the difference of 30 and 10. So these two are equal to each other. It's just that one is written with numbers and operation signs, and one is written with words. All right, last one. This is very similar to the previous problem, so we'll, we'll make it quick. Once again, we have ourselves three numbers here. We got seven times four plus 3. 7 times 4 plus 3. In fact, I think I may actually simplify this a bit. 7 times 4 is the first step we would do, and then whatever that is, we would then add 3 to it, right? So let's treat the problem like this. 7 times 4 is the first step, then plus 3 afterwards. So which explanation would be the one, or which uh, written statement would be the one that best matches the numerical statement above? We're told, is it A, the product of 7 and the sum of 4 and 3? Is it the product of 7 and the difference of 4 and 3? Is it C, the product of 7 and 4 minus 3? Or is it D, the product of 7 and 4, plus 3. Okay, so right off the bat, there are a couple we can probably, a couple answers we can probably strike out as certainly not being correct. If we look at the operation signs we're using here, we got a multiplication sign and we have an addition sign, right? We are multiplying and adding. Therefore, the only key words that should be used in the written answer should only be either multiplication or adding words. If you notice, answer B says the product of 7 and the difference of 4 and 3. Well, difference is a subtraction word, right? But there's no subtraction in this problem. Therefore, it can't be B. There's no subtracting here. Same reason can be used for why we can strike out answer C. It says the product of 7 and 4 minus 3. But again, there is no minus. There's no subtracting in this problem. So we can get rid of that answer. It can't be correct. That leaves only, by process of elimination, only answer A or answer D. So let's look carefully one more time. They both start with the product of 7, the product of 7, hmm. But answer A says the product of 7 and the sum of 4 and 3, whereas D says the product of 7 and 4 plus 3. So they may look similar because this one uses the word sum and this one uses the word plus, and so you might think, well, well those are both adding words, right? Here's the key, though. If we're told that we need to look for the sum of 4 and 3, what that would imply is that we would have to add 4 plus 3 first, which means the sum in 4 and 3 would actually have to have parentheses around it like this. But this problem does not have parentheses, right? We're not doing 4 plus 3 first, say, to get 7, and then doing 7 times that 7. We're not doing that. Rather, what we are doing 
is we are doing 7 times 4 first, right, according to PEMDAS rules, and then whatever that answer is, which is 28, we are then adding 3 to that. So we're doing 28 plus 3, which is 31. So as for which statement is the one that produces that answer, it's not A, because the sum of 4 and 3, we are not adding 4 plus 3 first and then multiplying that by 7. Rather, we are, as answer D says, finding the product of 7 and 4, multiplying 7 times 4 first, then adding 3 to that. Therefore, the answer to this one must be D. All right, so there we have it, a selection of problems either exactly like or very, very similar to problems you'll see on today's quiz. Hopefully this helps some of you out today. If you end up needing some support, I can help you guys out tomorrow. For now, thank you so much for joining me. Do your best on your quiz today, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.